the chairman, House Committee on Media and Public Affairs. Glad to have you join us. Welcome to another edition of the program Ben Kalu's Mandate. Thank you, Mike, for having me again today. And uh, it's such a pleasure to be here. And uh, I want to use this opportunity to thank listeners who have uh, again today tried to tune in for this conversation borders and national issues, state and my federal constituency. All right, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, let's uh, begin with some very key issues. The National Assembly resumes plenary today being the 18th of January 2022. And one of the key issues I believe that we dominate us is the Electoral Act Amendment Bill. And uh, let's begin with the contentious clause of the now famous bill, Electoral Amendment Bill, that the President refused penning his signature especially as we start with the ripples from the much uh, publicized uh, citizens and ta town hall meeting uh, on the electoral bill organized by Yaga Africa and development partners that you participated. Some analysts are of the opinion that the issue at hand is a supremacy tussle between national lawmakers and their governors, emphatically stating that the governors own the land and have a way of deciding who are the delegates. So if a political party adopts indirect primary anyways. So the conclusion is that insertion of that clause of direct primary is for self-preservation of the lawmakers during electioneering period. So now the question is, what influenced the National Assembly to go on with this bill? Thank you very much. Uh, Mike, you're not the only one asking this question. This question has been in the public space um, mm. recently where people are beginning to misunderstand the intention of the members of the National Assembly uh, for engaging in this uh, voyage of um, uh, electoral reform. And they make it appear as if it's a self-serving effort. They make it as appear as if um, um, because of the attrition, high attrition rate of uh, members of the National Assembly, they are looking for a way to have uh, better protection. But this is far from the reason that motivated the Ninth Assembly, both Senate and House of Representatives um, in going for this electoral reform, which occupies the front burner um, on the list of priorities for the Ninth Assembly, especially the uh, legislative agenda of the Ninth Assembly. And one will wonder what informed us uh, <clears throat> as lawmakers we are aware that our nation nigeria is a democratic entity and as a democratic entity it is not operating in isolation of all the members of committee of nation and um, those committee uh, committee of nation members operate through a framework and uh, this is like a standard framework if you want to advance you are democracy and nigeria has become signatories to this framework and we're talking about article 6 of the uh, ECOWAS protocol on mm. uh, democracy and good governance we're also talking about uh, article 17 of the african union chapter on uh, democracy elections and good governance and finally article 21 of the united nations declaration on human rights. <clears throat> there is a thin line running through all these articles and what they seek to achieve. And that thin line that runs through all of them is the, uh, you know, for members of uh, the signatories to this particular instrument to ensure at all times during the election that it is conducted, uh, you know, uh, in a manner that it is free, fair, inclusive and credible so and when you talk about a credible election people get you know confused sometimes what actually is defined as credible election in our search for electoral reform we found uh, key cardinal points to define what should stand for a credible election and that is nothing but inclusiveness transparency, mm. accountability, and competitiveness. These are the four key 
element that must be available in the conduct of election for it to become a credible election. These were the things that informed us because we found out that there is a nexus between a credible election and um, political stability. Because we found that there is a bond between credible election and economic prosperity of a nation. We found that there is a link between credible election and a balanced and healthy social space. Mm. And for those who are agents of nation building, we decided that this was the right way to go and the time cannot be better than now to reform our electoral laws so that these expected outcomes that I just listed will help us as tools towards nation building. And if you go through all the provisions of this particular uh, electoral act, you will yeah. see the reflection of these cardinal points I mentioned to you. Uh, you see them appearing in the uh, various clauses. Take, for example, if you pick up um, Clause uh, 87, which mandates the political parties to conduct primary ele election, like 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 you direct primary election, yeah, like you right, just yeah. mentioned, is it to preserve us? It is not to preserve us. It is to, it's to increase the democratization of uh, political party administration. Mm. You know, uh, which is missing at the moment. You know, and uh, it's also to reduce the issue of godfatherism, where the popular people wanted by the people end up not being selected, not given the platform to be able to lead the people that love them. That is what. And then if you go to Clause 52, that we all debated for a very long time on the discretionary power of the INEC to transmit a result electronically. One question is, what is our aim? You will refer back to the four cardinal points. And in this case, accountability and transparency. Because by including clause 52 for this electronic transmission of results, you are increasing the electoral integrity and also decreasing uh, malpractices within the electoral space. So it's not self serving The same is applicable to 43 uh, sub 1 and sub 2, which is a provision for electoral, electronic uh, machine, uh, voting machine. Mm. And uh, this is also to increase transparency and also electoral integrity. Now, what happens to people with disability when you talk about inclusiveness? They were not included before. But now, knowing that people with disability occupies more than 10% of our population, at the moment, statistics shows there are about 27 million people in Nigeria. And the former Electoral Act did not incorporate, include them. So the inclusive, uh, 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 inclusiveness, uh, that uh, element of uh, our our uh, cardinal point for a credible election made it possible that people with disability would not be recognized. Mm. And I can go on and on about card reader and accountability, about uh, preventing conflict of interest in the electoral system, because the act is saying, the bill is saying no to members of political parties who want to work in INEC as INEC staff. And also, it was very clear with regards to overbooking and also early funding of INEC to be able to drive their efficiency and effectiveness. Mm -hmm. And also putting election funding ceiling, you know, which many people have misunderstood as uh, a call for larger amount of investment into election um, um, uh, uh, operation. No, it is a ceiling. You cannot go beyond this particular amount. So these are some of the things that have been you know, captured in this bill which has nothing to do with members of National Assembly, but for the integrity, for increasing the integrity of the electoral process in Nigeria, which is one of the ways, um, you know, we we, 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 we we strive towards advancing our democracy. Mm. So fantastic that you've listed again, sir, uh, that, uh, of course, Nigerians will get to benefit from the Electoral Act bill which, of course, looking at those gains, you're saying it is not for the self-preservation of the lawmakers. But Nigerians and critical and uh, critical stakeholders in the electoral process have been anxiously waiting uh, for lawmakers to resume to take timely actions on the electoral bill, which uh, they believe would greatly improve the country's electoral process, like you also believe if it becomes law. Though there are concerns that 
any further delay on the electoral amendment bill uh, being signed into law uh, uh, before it is signed into law would constitute a big drawback for the 2023 general elections as electoral law as we know is expected to be in place maybe at least a year before the election to direct the activities of INEC. So now that the president has uh, withheld assent to the bill, are you going, are you? I mean, are the lawmakers going on with other clauses or stopping the entire process or doing the bid of the president? What are the options before the House? Uh, thank you very much. I, I must mention here, uh, Mike, that um, um, the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria did not act outside the provisions of the Constitution with regards to his mandate in the process of making a bill become an act. Um, the Constitution in Chapter 5, Part 1, specifically on Section 58, Sub 4, uh, empowered Mr. President to withheld assets. That is something I want to point out here, and I've okay. said that over and over again. That particular provision of the Constitution did not even give Mr. President any um, allowance to uh, any mandate, ma mandate to give reasons for withholding his assent. Mm. So he just say he has the power to withhold his assent. But here, Mr. President uh, went beyond the expectation of the mandate of that particular uh, section of the Constitution and outlined reasons why he was not going to assent to the bill and some of the reasons conversed by mr president from his 19 paragraph letter um, which i consider actually the spirit of a democrat for him to do that because he didn't have to but he did that uh, he outlined issues like high cost of um, conducting and administering this particular direct primary mode of mm -hmm. uh, direct primaries you know and uh he, he also mentioned that uh, the process will stifle smaller political parties coming up like the, uh, you know, YPP or those YP or the smaller parties coming up. So it's going to stifle them, according to Mr. President. He also mentioned that um, uh, it will be a problem for security. Uh, having in mind that there's going to be um, a, a large, large turnout of uh, people uh, during that process, uh, he he argued that um, the INEC will be overburdened. He argued that the security agencies will be overburdened, and he also argued that there is going to be an increase uh, of uh, intra-party litigations, which means that the judiciary will also be overburdened if this process is. Done. That is the argument of Mr. President. Now you ask me, what are the options before us? The option before us is that as we are resuming today, unfortunately, I am not in the parliament because my work on the constituency um, is not done. Moreover, if I had wanted to leave today, the uh, lockdown or sit at home uh, by IPOP would not allow me to travel. And we have to respect uh, that call for sit at home so that uh, people will not have excuses to do what they are not supposed to do so i am in my constituency tidying up what i came here to do but i'll be joining the plenary by tomorrow but today okay um the issue is going to occupy the front border and um we're going to look at those reasons conversed by mr president uh, to to know how, how weighty they are on the scale of uh, what the public consensus is all about what the people want because we are not the parliament for mr president we are the parliament for the people we are the people's parliament not mr president's parliament so he has conversed his reasons uh, over what was sent to him. okay we have been consulting with the major stakeholders in our various constituencies so we are going to put it down and analyze what he has been presented, what we have, uh, what he has presented to us. Mm. Now, the options, like you mentioned, um, uh, are about three options. One option okay. is to say, okay, the election is starting February of next year. By the time we finish tidying up, it might be late. Let's go with the old, old electoral um, act. But is that what Nigerians want? No, that's not what Nigerians want. Nigerians don't want to see another election 
in that old wine skin, mm. you know, of uh, old electoral law. Nigerians want something new. Having identified their problems, they believe that what have been captured in this particular document will definitely bring us closer to the expectation of the eight tools, principal tenets of democracy. So therefore, I don't think that is going to be an option. Now, the second option is for us to um, override Mr. President by allowing what he has done in uh, chapter five, chapter fifth, uh, chapter uh, five, um, section fifty-eight, uh, subsection four, allowing that to activate subsection five. Mm. And what subsection five uh, advocates is that we have the option of overriding Mr. President. Okay. We have the power. It won't be anything illegal. So, but to do that, the Constitution expects that you have to third majority of the members of the House of Representatives and also to third majority of the members of the Senate saying, please, we want to override Mr. President on this issue. It won't be the first time it's happening in Nigeria. This is what is going to be considered. <clears throat> now, another option is to be considered is the option of um, looking at clause 87 as it is, okay. with direct primaries, versus the remaining clauses of this bill, uh, and knowing whether on the scale of what is uh, reasonable, if the weight of one clause is stronger, is weightier, is mm. heavier than the benefits found in other clauses of the of, of, of the piece of legislation, now when we scale it, be able to know whether we are going to throw away the, the child with the bath water, or we're going to save the child and throw away the bath water. Mm. The bad water here is the insistence on 87 as it is, not as proposed by Mr. President. It must be clear that Mr. President did not say to remove 87 in its entirety. Mr. President, just 87 to incorporate various options like indirect primaries, direct primaries, and consensus enable those who have the freedom to use either of them use that for political parties mm. so we're going to look at the consequences and the benefits of you know uh, tailoring the 87 to reflect uh, what the president has suggested mm. and um, going along with it and if that is going to be done we have to do that quickly and take it back to Mr. President for his assent. Mr. President has, a, has promised that if we shift it a little bit to accommodate all the options, that he will, will sign it into law. Many believe that he's not going to do that. Yeah. But some of yeah. us believe that his, his uh, body language and um, the political will he has shown so far is of such that he would like to, uh, you know, make this be one of his now, uh, legal systems. Let, let me quickly cut, 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 you, cut in here. Uh, in the town hall organized by Yaga. I can't hear you, Mike. Okay. Uh, okay, let's see. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Mike. Okay, great. In case you just joined us, it is Ben Kalu's mandate, the weekly uh, engagement of Representative Benjamin Okeze Kalu with the good people of Abia State, especially Ben, the federal constituency, and uh, he's a spokesperson of the House of Representatives. So we've been looking at this uh, Electoral Act Amendment Bill. And let me quickly ask you, you stated that this will be an issue that will occupy the front burner as the House resumes today. Uh, and you also uh, listed some of the options available, three of them. But the question here is, the speedy, the speedy, uh, 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 to ensure that this uh, process is as sped up uh, because the CSOs uh, came up with uh, 
January uh, January 31 deadline. And if you check these processes, we have uh, less than a year, well, just about a year, to this to these uh, 2023 general election. So how fast and how um, uh, quick should we expect the lawmakers to act on some of these processes that you've listed? That the options are available on ground. Um, um, Mike, I agree with you. The time is of the essence mm. in making sure that in line with the spirit of um, the instrument I just mentioned to you, the framework that I just mentioned to you, Article C, the GOAS Protocol, the Electoral um, Democracy, Article 17 of uh, African Union Charter, and uh, democracy, election, and good governance, and Article 21 of uh, the United Nations Declaration on Democracy and on Human Rights. Uh, all of them teaches that these things should be done at least one year before the election. And if you look at the calendar that has been set for the next election, we sparsely have uh, uh, that one year. Uh, just a, a month or so in between because the president's election was about 23rd of, of, of February of next year. So I agree with the CSO that time is of the essence. And I also want to assure uh, the CSOs and Nigerians that the commitment of the House of Representatives to was, uh, you know, speeding up the process discharging this responsibility uh, will be able to match our commitment is strong enough to match the expectation mm. of time uh, with regards to this particular obligation so there's nothing to worry about okay fantastic uh let me take you back to the president's uh, reasons just before we go for the break and looking at what uh, some governors are saying on the other side i mean governors of uh, PDP to be very specific, Governor Yes on Wiki of River State. So let's look at the reasons of Mr. President. Do you think those reasons are logical and uh, convincing enough to stop the signing, or are you suspecting an undertone to the president standing? Uh, Governor Yes on Wiki cited examples like the Petroleum Industry Act, as we speak, that the president sent it back to the National Assembly uh, for it to be worked on, despite signing it. That the same should have happened in this uh, case of electoral art amendment bill we cannot be preempting mr president and also deciding for him how he goes about conducting his constitutional responsibility just like the house of representatives is self-regulating as a lot by the provisions of the constitution of the federal republic of nigeria in the spirit of uh, the doctrine of suppression of powers, we cannot enter into that space to determine when he chooses to do what he ought to do, as long as he has within the time allowed by the Constitution and how he goes about it. Mm -hmm. If he did that with the PIA, which everybody believed that he was not going to sign, remember the news everywhere was that he was not going to sign the PIB to become PIA, but he let us sign it. Uh, same thing is going on with uh, this particular bill. Uh, people are beginning to fan up the political space with a lot of insinuations uh, that are found that uh, the president is committed to sign the electoral bill to become act. All he has given in his 19 paragraph is not more than one reason. He only gave one reason. Clause 87. Fine tune it, accommodate other people, bring it back up to sign. If he fails to do that, then endurance can go to the market and shout from the rooftop. rooftop. But for now, he has passed the ball constitutionally back to the House of Representatives. And it is our duty to take it out from where uh, we have, he has sent it to, to where we have gotten it and take it back to him as mm. quickly as possible. So the focus should be on the National Assembly at the moment, not Mr. President. As by the reasons given, I just listed the reasons given by him, and I also mentioned to you that uh, the weight of it, the 
seriousness to be attached to it. Okay. We wait on a scale of reasonability uh, against the people's opinion when we meet as the people's parliamentarians uh, today, tomorrow. And, um, Nigerians will know our position on the option. Okay, that we have to is, go there, with. is there a timeline to this? Maybe a deadline from your end since you said our focus should be on the National Assembly? Maybe a timeline, uh, a timeline rather, uh, from the House to Nigerians. You know, we're so eager to get this uh, uh, working. Uh, well, well, like I said, it's going to, when you say something is going to occupy the front burner. Yes, it means that nothing takes priority on the scale of preference. It means that mm. it is number one, and because Nigerians who are paying us with taxpayers' money want it to be number one. Okay. We cannot put anything ahead of it. And once something is made number one on our list, uh, it must be discharged before any other thing. So all the mechanisms that we use to treat issues that appear on the num as number one on the other paper on our priority list will be adopted. Mm -hmm. Like I said, we will be within time. Within time expectation, we will meet the time expectation as allowed by the Constitution and as... Uh, expected by Nigerians. There is nothing to worry about. All right. It is still Ben Kalu's mandate, of course, the weekly engagement of Representative Benjamin Okezie Kalu with the good people of Abia State, especially Ben the Federal Constituency. He is a spokesperson of the House of Reps and also the Chairman, House Committee on Media and Public Affairs. And we've been looking at that uh, Electoral Amendment Bill, which will be on the front burner as the House of Representatives resumes today. We take a break now. When we return, the conversation continues. And uh, when we return, we talk about uh, some errors noted by the CSOs. And uh, we talk about party politics, especially the All Progressives Congress in Abia State. Stay tuned. Is Benjamin Okese Kahlo representing the good people of Bende Federal Constituency? I am from Abia State. Arise from the hallowed chambers. Hey. His voice resonates crystal clear. You say you, you shared money recently, and I represent the constituency. And the, there are 360 of us, and all of them are saying we are not feeling the impact. He is the unmistaking voice of Undi Bende and the image maker of the House of uh, Representatives. Swept away houses and roads in communities like Mpa, Umimeni, Uzita, and Bende. Mr. Speaker, I he's a committed, courageous, articulate, and deeply impassioned lawmaker with the plight of his constituents. Joining me now on the political segment is Honorable Benjamin Kalu, who's the spokesman of the House of Representatives. Ben Kalu's ben mandate, mandate gives you first hand information on the activities of the member representing the good people of Bende Federal Constituency at the House of Representatives, Honorable Benjamin Kalu, as well as his position on national issues. Ben Kalu Kalu's mandate. All right, thank you very much for staying tuned. Still, Ben Kalu's mandate. Of course, we do this every week on this platform, Flow 94.9 FM, both on the terrestrial and uh, digital platforms. So, let's talk about, uh, still talking about the uh, uh, Electoral Act Amendment Bill, which is still uh, on the workings at the National Assembly. Of course, the lawmakers are resuming today. The Civil society organizations identified some drafting errors in the electoral bill, and according to them, I mean the CSOs, uh, the coalition of uh, eight civic groups, uh, they they identified some drafting errors contained in the electoral act amendment bill, uh, which clauses were pointed out by the CSOs. If I may ask us, uh, areas of cross-referencing errors, and another thing is, will those errors affect the outcome of this bill? That's a very, very important one. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Okay. Um, Michael, you can hear me, right? Yes, I can hear you loud and clear. Yeah. So, um, the issue about this has been debated time and again even during the the town hall meeting that we had and what has been the issue has been the source of the document used by the coalition of these uh, civil society organization if you followed that particular um, conversation during the town hall that was televised by about three uh, tv stations um 
you will agree with me that the spokesperson of the Senate was not really happy with the way uh, it was thrown up that mm. there were errors in that document. And he was questioning the integrity of the source. Now, the document of, that was uh, in the public, the, well, that the, is still in the, the public. Doc- mm. the doc- they said they said it's in the public but there are so many documents in the public but having said that um my intervention was that we are all partners in these nigerian projects and the civil society organizations remain a fundamental partner stakeholder in um, the effort to advance our democracy and I mentioned that I received a letter from them on the 29th of December, uh, mentioning some of the areas they had concerned with. And some of these areas they had concerned with had to do with uh, Clause 24, uh, Sub 4, where the uh, Commission appoints a subsequent date in accordance with subsection two, three, and four. They are saying there shall be no return on election until polling has taken place. So uh, the issue there was that subsection one of that particular section was omitted, resulting to improper cross-referencing. I'm giving you examples. Yeah, okay. And what was their recommendation? They were, recommend, they were recommending that uh, for proper cross-reference, two and three, and subsection four should be deleted in the subsection four and replaced with one, two, and three. So the first one was reading uh, one, two, three, four. They wanted to read now one, two, three because of the non-existence of subsection one. So two becomes one, things like that. They also have issues with section 50, subsection two, which is clause 50, Subsection two, because when it, when it's a bill, it's a clause. When it is a, an act of common parliament, it's a section. So, and uh, they had issues with uh, conduct of pool by open secret ballot. And their concern was section 63 was wrongly referenced because it says in that section 50 that subject to section 63 of this act, voting at the election and transmission of results under this act shall be in accordance with the procedure determined by the commission. And they are saying section 63 that was referred to was wrongly referred in subsection. There is no relationship between section 50 and section 63. And what they proposed was to reflect the correct cross referencing section 63 should be replaced with section 60 on counting of votes and form. So things like that you will see in uh, uh, the uh, section 64, subsection 7 and 8, section 91, subsection 2, section 107, subsection 3, section 137 and 138. And uh, when you go to the subhead, you'll be seeing their complaint with regards to paragraph 4, 5, 7 and 8 uh, on uh, content of election petition. And they also propose that paragraph four sub seven and paragraph four sub eight should be deleted. So this is when you talk about cross reference because Nigerians have been hearing cross referencing, cross reference. What is it about? So paragraph ten sub two. Uh, also, they complain about it, which has to do with non filling of memorandum of appearance, non filing of memorandum of appearance. And they were saying the non filing of a memorandum of appearance shall not be a bar. You know, should not bar the respondent from defending the election petition if the respondent files his reply to the election petition in the registry within a reasonable time. But in any case, not later than 21 days from the receipt of the election petition. And we are saying there is an there is a grammatical error in the spelling of filing. Mm. So that should be that the word filing appearing in the subheading and the subparagraph should be replaced with the word filing so instead of f-i-l-l-i-n-g it should be f-i-l-i-n-g to address the grammatical 
error. So these are the kind of things they, they complain about. Paragraph 14 to amendment of election petition and reply. Paragraph 16, three, the petition's reply. In that one, they said the petitioner in proving his case shall have 14 days to do so. And the respondent shall have 14 days to reply. And they are saying that paragraph 16.3 is in conflict with the provisions of paragraph 41 and sub 10, which outlines comprehensive timelines for petitioners to prove their case and also respondents to file a response. So, and they propose that to cure this is to address this conflict, paragraph 16.3 should be deleted. So they are saying delete paragraph 16.3 because it has already been taken care of by 4110. So these are the kind of uh, things you will see um, in the cross-referencing error that is being referred to by Yaga International Press Center, Center for Citizens with Disability, the Abino Foundation, the Clean Foundation, Institute for Media and Society, Nigerian Women Trust Fund, Premium Time Center for Investigative Journalism. These are the ones who came together as eight CSOs to profile this. But we are questioning the source, whether the document they use is the clean copy that was sent to Mr. President or the one that, um, uh, or, or, or the one that uh, they just speak from the street. Okay. But whatever it is, we are going to take this input from mm -hmm. them as a feedback mechanism to analyze when we sit down to discuss from today onwards. No, oh, fantastic. So let's uh, move away from the Electoral Act Amendment Bill. We've uh, talked so much about this because of our time. Talk about uh, the All Progressives Congress in the state, in Abia State. So much is happening in the state. I know you speak for the uh, uh, the Abia Caucus of ABC, APC, and uh, it seems the party is trying to, recon to reconcile the different factions of the, uh, in the state. Uh, when is it expected? that the party will reunite as one 2023 is fast approaching will and uh, many persons are asking is this how apc will be a formidable force come 2023 being the leading opposition party in abia yeah thank you uh, michael you know i always uh, avoid discussions around my party yes um, but it has become very important for some of these issues to be taken care of. Mm. I I do not actually project political parties uh, more than the position that we're occupying, which is uh, supposed to be somewhat neutral because you're taking care of those who are in opposition and those who are in the same party with you when you are representing, you are representing the good, the bad, the ugly, you are representing your PDP, your APC, your APCA, your AD. So when you occupy this position, you try as much as possible to remove the government of uh, political parties so that you be unbiased in making sure that the dividends of uh, democracy is not carried out or distributed with the colors of discrimination. Um, but we belong to a family and that family from where we got the platform to be where we are and it is called APC. Um, a lot of uh, effort is being made say when there is congress is that you always have uh, splinter groups complaining of this and that and everybody not being satisfied and, uh, but it's one family uh, as it stands now as of today if abia abc want to win the government house uh, it is not in the shape and form they are uh, that is the truth uh, mm. uh, the national body has seen it that there is that's why this the set of the uh, senator Adamu's uh, uh, reconciliation committee to look into it uh, this committee met in Abuja uh, a few days back unfortunately I was uh, running up uh, already scheduled program but uh, in my distribution of food, which I promised severally to 8,000 8, families around Bende, so I could not leave to join them because the notification came, you know, a bit too uh, soon, so I couldn't meet. But I had the met 
in Abuja, it was not attended by uh, all the parties that uh, 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 letters were sent in place of physical attendance. Uh, you see, and the tone of the letters I've been reading online, and I don't know if they are correct, I don't know if they are from the right source, but if mm. such letters are from the right source, it means that we are deceiving ourselves. But it's in ourselves in the sense that you need people to win election. You cannot, you knew what was happening to this party before 2015. And when we came on board from 2015, there was uh, a new energy uh, that came into the party. Nobody's taking credit, but people worked very hard to reposition the party in our state today. And if politics is about the people, we should not be anti-reconciliation mm. because no one man can do it alone. If you think you are powerful, uh, you will fail. If you think you can do it alone, you fail because power is with the people. It's the only wisdom that will have people uh, forget their pride and ego and sit down and deliberate on the way to move the political party forward. For goodness sake, it's not your father's property. It's nobody's father's property. So, and that's why I don't belong to and believe in factions. We are all members of APC. I will only respect those who respect me. I will only respect those and recognize those who recognize that I'm insistent. My little space is Bender Federal constituency. And I'm doing so well to make sure that the party is projected here. If you think otherwise, it is up to you. If you want us to work together to leave the banner of the party in this my small federal constituency, then we'll join hands. If we ignore that people like us are existing and that we are doing something good for the party, you do such to your own peril because there is no magic when it comes to uh, po politics and democracy if you eliminate the people. And that is the same message all across India. They are uh, the majority of the people. Hmm. If the majority of the people are on this side and you're on the other side, reach out to them and let's build a formidable block. And the majority of people should not be averse to uh, you know, reconciliation because you are much in majority. And the minority should not assume the powers they don't have. They should not assume that they, are, they can do magic. That which magic are you going to do? cannot do it's a self-deceit voyage what are you going to do you if you have money other people have money you have contact other people have contact but who has the people should be the question you should only align align in politics you must align yourself with where the people are before you even talk about positions and power talk about the people and if you blow the waste today how many people will come to you and if the other people blow their ways to, how many people will come to them? And the strength of any politics is the people. And I, I encourage all members of uh, our party to come down from their high horses. It's very embarrassing. Come back from your pride their platforms. And begin to engage with your brothers and your sisters to form a way forward. Nobody can have it all in politics. You must come to the negotiation table where you will give out some and you take some and we'll move on. To say one man will take it all or one man will lose it all, you will lose the man and lose the people who are with the man. And you will gain your position and then you you sit with empty position without the people. And what is position without the people? So the APC should wake up. If they really see in taking over power, not just rhetoric, not just talk, not just bragging, they will take how ah, are you going to take over the power from other state? If you are if you are not if you are divided, if you are not together, which magic are you going to do? In Anambra State, we, 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 everybody believes oh, there's going to be a magic. Magic will happen, and then uh, 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 APC will match. Did that magic happen? We are the people not pass, uh, 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 powerful. We are the people not connected. We are they not rich. But you love the people. You must engage the people to win the, the, the people's heart and then win their vote. That is the only secret. What happened in Anambra should be a big case, a big, a big example for every member of party of our party to learn from. It's not about how powerful you are as a single person, as an individual, how connected you are as an individual. That is not what it is. 
It's about the people. And it's a synergy. Everybody must come together. I, um, I bring my own, you bring your own. I bring my strength, you bring your strength. And together we'll form a formidable block and then kick out the party uh, that is in power at the moment. With this kind of uh, approach, we are just we are just wasting our time. Unless right. we come together and form a very big block, I can assure you it will be difficult to kick out any opposition like this, both at the nation, national level, and at the at the at the state level. We must unite. What? After Congress, Congress comes um, reconciliation. That what? reconciliation should be embraced by all. People should leave their high horses if they really want to win the next election. All right. Thank we, you. We, we have less than eight minutes to wrap up the program, and uh, we would like to get feedback uh, from the public, of course, very important on some of those issues that you've trudged today. Not forgetting that the your trip to the 13 wards of your constituency was successful, distributing over 8,000 bags of rice to your constituents. Uh, it must have been a very tasking exercise for you. No, it was very rewarding. It was very rewarding. In mm. fact, um, it was like a meet and greet um, effort again. Uh, most of these people, you see people going to them during the election. And that means uh, commercializing your relationship with them. I don't want to commercialize my relationship with my constituent. That is why, uh, periodically, I'm at home being home. All right. I'm at home being with them. Mm. I, I like going to them. Whether it is biscuits I have, I give to them. It's not in the size of the gift. It's in the recognition and the remembrance that they existed. So we went down to the, every home. We chose 8,000 homes. And we visited around, you know, to show them love and to strengthen their heart as the year has started, oh. that the year is going to be good. So um, I'm going to be seeing more at home because uh, there are a lot of unfinished uh, businesses here that we need to tidy up. Okay, 0808-182-6949. 0811-605-2949. Also drop messages on 0906-510-8289. Please, because of our time, kindly morning, go straight to the point. Good morning. Welcome. I'm Pastor Sam at Mboko, the one in Afaruku hosting your beautiful office. All right. You're welcome, Pastor Sam. Um, at the federal level, APC's total dissolution um, the massive inflow into PRP is very, very eminent. For those who have been fueling APC's crisis in Abia State, they should just save their resources. Because at this Abia level, all those banking on APC National Aid School shall be disappointed when the current ESCO is dissolved next month. And then they will realize that their roots are uprooted. ACC is expected to be the main opposition party. But allowing CDP or any other party to plant people there is really very, very bad. All right, Pastor Sam. All right, thank you very much. Glad to have you join us. What's your name? Prof. Achada. Uh, All right, Professor. Good morning, Rep. Benjamin. You're also representing me on for meeting in Bend, the government area. Thank you for your magnanimity. I'm not a politician. I'm not a, a partisan man. I say it the way it is. You've been trying since you entered here. Just for the fact that you have APC, that you've been trying. Kudos, you know, man. Continue. Please, that's a letter of amendment bill. There is a person who did not answer. Are we sure, Nigerians, are we really sure that that bill will see the light of the day? Considering the time that the constitution stipulated that it must be signed before another upcoming election. We want to answer that question. So we will hold you people by your word as a regime today. That's my own take. Thank you. All right, Professor. Thank you. Glad to have you join us. Ooh, that didn't pull through. Keep your calls coming quickly so that you can respond to your questions before we wrap up the program. We have less than four minutes to do that. Uh, glad to have you join us. What's your name? Hello, good morning. You're welcome. Uh, good morning. Uh, call it from Miss Quator. All right, thank you all the way from Miss Quator. Good morning, our honorable. I want to, I want to thank the honorable for the for his uh, for the way he has been representing the. I can't hear now. I, I want to thank the honorable the way he has been representing the good people of Bend. Uh, 
I was actually impressed. Even the first day he uh, he, he came to my life, where he, he he was able to sponsor the different move emotion. That is the kind of people we need, not people that will, will that will, will be there talking about uh, party 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 politics. So I want to ask him to keep up the good work that he has been doing. God is with him. Thank you very much. Sir. All right, thank you very much. All the way from his equator. I'm glad to have you join us. What's your name? Hello, my name is Josiah Kano. Good morning, Honorable Benjamin. Good morning, my my brother in the studio. I call him from Ibere, the good people, the good <coughs> Ibere, the center of excellence. I just want to commend the Honorable Benjamin Kano for what he has been doing in Ibere, the local government. We cannot compare it with the wasted two years of PDP. Wasted years of two, PDP. Benjamin Kalu, two years of him being in terms of rep, have shown that he is like Ojo's or Kano, who has the people in mind. Because I just want the people of Arsene to keep on praying for them. They have so many other things to do for us. God will keep on blessing Benjamin Kalu because he is a man of the people. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you very much. All the way from Iberia. What's your name? Uh, Justin, uh, one more call to uh, wrap up the program. One for the road. Let's do this uh, quickly before he responds. Yes. What's your name and where you calling from? Hello. Okay. What's your name and where you calling from? Mike. Yes. Good morning, Mike. You're welcome. Good morning. I have been trying to in this program. I thank Almighty God. I'm the last caller. All right. Welcome. You're supposed to know your brother from another mother, Baba Gunas from Umotumunachubu. All right, Baba Gunas, you're welcome. My able brother, dear Ben Kalu, God will bless you for what you are saying. If you are doing it, God Almighty will bless you. I want him to talk to our president and the Minister of Labor. The promise they have been making in respect of uh, senior citizens, I put a heart from the president himself and the uh, Minister of Labor. That is my brother in respect of minimum wage of a retiree or the senior citizen, they have been promised for about four years. I don't believe that the president can promise that to so all people and with one of us to so not fulfill it. I want to use this media to tell them that if you help me talk to the president, any promise he made, anything he wants to do, let him do it and hold it. He cannot satisfy everybody, quite sure. But anyone he says, do it. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you very much. I will allow Representative Benjamin Kalu to respond to your questions and also your comments now. Yeah. Um, Michael, thank you very much. Um, unfortunately, I didn't hear most of the uh, comment because wow. we were close to their radio. Uh, but I heard um, the one... Uh, I'll try my best to see what I make out, to okay. see what I made, I made out of the conversation. Uh, the Ministry of Labor, the senior citizen, and the promise the president made. Uh, thank you for appreciating us all the way from Mobo and uh, in Imo State. Really appreciate. Uh, I will find out from uh, Mike what exactly we are saying about Ministry of Labor, senior citizens, and the promise made by Mr. President. Um, Josiah, was it more clear? To you yourself appreciating our work. Uh, God bless you too. Carlo from Iberia. The gentleman from Isuku also want to thank you for appreciating the work we are doing. You were wondering if uh, the electoral art is going to see the light of the day. I can assure you the electoral art will see the light of the day. We are working, we are committed to making sure that this is the light of the day. The same way the PIB finally saw the light of the day, this one okay. will see the light of the day. And you know, not, no law is cast on stones. If we don't get it all 100% now, with subsequent amendment, we can get it uh, sorted. There's another person who thanked me, I uh, couldn't get the name, and uh, all of you who called in today, I really appreciate it. I think, the, I think we'll, uh, we'll, we'll try and make sure that this calling time will get to about uh, 20 minutes. Okay. Uh, I, or 25 I minutes. Will so script, that people I will script who, the um, questions and send the questions to you. Okay, please. And then we'll, we'll try and make sure that people phone, people have more time because a lot of people were trying to call in. And mm -hmm. let's give them more time subsequently to 
engage this no. pur- purpose of having this program. All yeah. right, I, I appreciate it. Thank you very much for joining us this week on Ben Kalu's Mandate. Hopefully next week we have more time uh, to get uh, feedbacks uh, on the platform. We do appreciate you. Do enjoy the rest of your week. Thank you very much. And God bless all of you. All right. Uh, next week is another time on Ben Kalu's Mandate. My name is Michael. Oh, nee, stay out of trouble. Thank you.